The challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you husky. <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Ernie Cushing and his partner, Lem Eaton, moved along the trail to Selkirk behind their dog team. Ernie, 22 years old, had met Lem, an old trapper, the summer before. The two had agreed to become partners on Beaver Creek, and Ernie had put up a few hundred dollars to grub stake them during the winter season. The winter was almost over, and this was their second trip to town with a load of valuable skins. Ernie was talking as they traveled. By golly, Lem, this load ought to bring more than the first one we took in two months ago. Yeah, that's right, Ernie. We got some mighty fine skins in this batch. How much you figure we'll get for them? Hell, now, that's hard to say offhand. But I reckon maybe $1,000, Ernie. Oh, gosh, that'll be great. The first batch brought only half that, Lem. I admit we have a few more skins this time. Yeah, we got more skins and finer ones. Yeah, I reckon that's right. <laughs> now, you see what I was speaking about? When I said trapping paid off better than mate working a claim, eh? <laughs> there aren't many who get 1500 out of a claim during one season, Ernie. No, sir. <laughs> That's right. Some of the fellas thought I was a fool to tie in with you, Lamb. This will show them they were wrong. Yeah, as long as so many of them steer clear of trapping, the better it is for the few of us who work at it. Of course, there are a lot of people who dig out plenty of gold, Lamb. Yep. Wish I was lucky enough to stake a claim that'd really pay off. Yeah, well, why do you want to strike it rich in a hurry, Ernie? You're young yet. And if you work steady at trapping, save your money. Ah, there's a girl, Lamb. Her father runs a newspaper in Dawson City. Her name's Ellen Smith. A girl, eh? Uh huh. We want to get married. She won't wait too long. Yeah, marry her and bring her down here, son. You don't have to strike it rich to do that, do you? I won't ask her to marry me while we have to struggle to get along. Well, she's the right sort, Ernie. She won't care about that. Yeah, let's not talk about it. Nothing you'd say would change my ideas about it, Lamb. Yeah, just as you say. Well, let's get a move on. These ornery dogs are beginning to lag a bit. I must, you husky. Hold there. Must. Must. Have. As soon as Lem and Ernie reached town, they made a deal at the trading post for their furs. Receiving a thousand dollars in cash for their load of skins, they left the trading post and headed for the cafe. Now, remember, Ernie, according to the agreement, the cash we make this first season is to be kept intact to take care of expenses and new equipment and all. Now, next season, we'll divide what we have and each will take care of his own cash. Uh-huh. We still have a few hundred put away at the cabin, Lem. Added to this thousand, it makes more than we'll need to get along. Yep, we're sitting pretty, son. By next season, you'll have a bank account of your own. But uh, that agreement's for your protection as well as mine. Shows one of us won't spend his share and leave the other to bear the expenses. Now, I'll put this cash with the other, and we'll agree on what's to be spent like we're doing now. Well, I say, let's keep aside 500 and split up the rest, Lamb. Yep. Something might come up and we'd need the extra cash. Better we stick to the agreement, Ernie. It's for the good of both of us. Well, here's a cafe. I'm hungry enough to eat a horse. Come on in. While they were in the cafe, Ernie Cushing again brought up the subject of dividing some of the cash. The discussion finally turned into an argument. At last, Lem rose from the table. Well, come on, Ernie. No use arguing here or any place else. As far as I'm concerned, we'll stick to the agreement we made. Uh, let's start back to the cabin. It's getting late. No. Go ahead if you like. I'm staying here a while longer. But if I take the dog sled, how you make it to the cabin? I'm staying in town at the hotel tonight. Find someone going up Beaver Creek way tomorrow. If I decide to go back to the cabin. 
No, Ernie, there's no use in being sore because I'm doing the best thing for us. We got along up to now. Come on home with me. No. Boys. Make me so mad there's no telling what might happen if we get to arguing again. I'm not going back with you tonight, and that's final. All right, son. That's the way you feel about it. I'll be back tomorrow to get supplies. You'll be able to get back with me then. Too long, is it? Uh... Two men sitting at a nearby table had overheard Ernie and Lem. One of them turned to the other and spoke in a low voice. Hey, look, Manny. From what those two are saying, the old man must have a wad of dough he's taken out to his cabin with. That's right, Mac. As I see it, the young fellow's plenty sore because he can't have his share now. I reckon others in here heard their argument, too. <laughs> yeah, how could they help you? You know, it gives me an idea. Hey, maybe I'm thinking the same thing. What's your idea? Now, look. If we went out there, we could get what cash the old man's carrying, plus what they have stashed away at the cabin. Uh huh. When the news got around, folks would remember the argument that the old man went home alone. That's right. We could fix it so's we'd get the dough, and that fella the sourdough called Ernie would get the blame. Mac, that's the same idea I had. If we leave now, we'll be able to follow the old man out and find the cabin. Let's go. On. All right, Manny. Time we were leaving anyhow. Lem Eaton arrived at the cabin and was preparing for bed when there was a knock at the cabin door. Well, maybe Ernie came home after all. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, what is it you Step want? Step aside, we're coming in. Hey, what's the idea here? We heard you talking in the cafe, mister. This gun says you'll hand over the cash you have here. Cash? What cash? Don't stand there and act like you don't know what cash. Get it. And get it quick. Get you... You know what's good for you? You'll give it to us without an argument. Now get the cash and make it fast. And if you don't... No, no, don't shoot. Don't shoot. I'll get it for you. Now you're talking sense. Go on, bring it out. It's here in this drawer. Now take that bag of cash. Yeah, this is it, all right, Manny. You won't get away with this. The money's a traitor. Shut up! <laughs> that put him out like a light. Yeah. Yeah, he's out all right, Manny. In fact, he's dead. That's good. Now we'll take his dog team back to town and leave it behind the hotel. Hey, that's a smart way to do it. Folks will think that fella Ernie brought the team back to town. And when the old man's body's found, he'll be blamed for the killing. That's right. There's a light snow falling, enough to cover all tracks. Well, let's hitch up his dog team. We'll get going back to town right away. Come on. Right. That night, Sergeant Preston arrived in Selkirk and was with the constable in his office when a prospector from Beaver Creek entered her excitedly. Hello, Ned. What brings you here this late at night? Sergeant, Lem Eaton's been murdered. Murdered? That's right. I was on the way home. Saw a light in Lem's cabin, so I stopped to visit a short time. Door was unlatched. And I found Lem inside. Somebody gave him a nasty blow on the back of the head. I come right back to town to tell you. Wasn't there any Cushing there at the cabin with Lem? No. And he was gone, so was the dog team. I saw Ernie and Lem together here in town earlier in the evening. I understand they came here with a load of furs to sell. Constable, I'll get the coroner and go out to the cabin. You try to locate Ernie Cushing and hold him till I get back. All right, Sergeant. Let's go. Come on, King. Oh, oh, oh. It was several hours later when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King returned to the constable's office. Oh, King! Hi, oh, 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 oh. Come on, King. Oh, oh, oh. Preston found the constable waiting with Ernie Cushing. After removing his parka, the sergeant sat down to question the young man. Well, constable, I see you found Ernie. Yes, sergeant. He was at the hotel. The dog team belonging to him and Lem was outside, behind the hotel. But I don't know how it got there, sergeant. I told the constable that. What were you doing at the hotel, Ernie? I went there to spend the night. Lem went home alone earlier in the evening, taking the dog team with him. I found out that Lem and Ernie had a dispute in the cafe before Lem left. Oh? What was that about, Ernie? Well, I wanted Lem to divide the money we'd made. He wouldn't do it. He, he insisted we stick to our agreement and keep it in a common fund. At least till after the next season. Where did Lem keep the money? It was kept in a bureau drawer out in the cabin. Top drawer? Yes. 
in a small canvas bag like you use for carrying gold dust. That door was open and empty when I investigated. Uh, Sergeant, at the cafe, I learned that Ernie got plenty sore at Lem. He refused to go back to the cabin with him. He said he was so mad that there was no telling what might happen if they started to argue again. Sure, I said that. But believe me, I wouldn't kill Lem. I didn't do it. How do you account for the dog sled being behind the hotel after Lem took it to the cabin? Don't know anything about it. Went to the hotel shortly after Lem left and went right to bed. You're sure you didn't get someone to take you out to the cabin? Of course I didn't. Lem said he'd be back in the morning and... Well, after I thought things over, I knew he was right about the matter. I decided to wait and go back with him. How much cash did you and Lem have at the cabin? About $1,300, including the 1000 we got for the furs we just sold at the trading post. Honest, Sergeant, I didn't go out there tonight. Did you talk to anyone about the money or about the fact that you were staying in town tonight? No. Lem and I were discussing things kind of a lot at the cafe. Plenty of people could have heard us. That cash gives a motive for the killing, Constable. That's right. Ernie, we'll have to hold you as a suspect unless you can prove you didn't leave your hotel room. But there's no way I can prove that. I tell you, I was sleeping. I, I didn't go to the cabin, and I didn't kill Lem. Well, Ernie, I'm inclined to believe you. But the only way to prove you didn't do it is for us to find someone else who did. Lock him up, Constable. We'll search his hotel room, then we'll go back to the cabin and look around. All right, Sergeant. Come on, Ernie. I'll have to put you in a cell for the time being. But I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't. After Ernie was locked up on suspicion, the sergeant and the constable went to the hotel and searched his room, but found nothing. They spent considerable time questioning men who had been at the cafe and who had heard the argument. It was morning when the two Mounties headed up the trail toward the cabin on Beaver Creek. As they moved along, the constable was saying, From all we've heard, sergeant, and because of the circumstances... I'm beginning to think Ernie Cushing is guilty. The fact that he argued with Lem and demanded his share of the cash is against him, Constable. But it doesn't make sense that he'd take the money, kill Lem, and then drive the team back to town and leave it behind the hotel. It's now known to us that Lem left town alone with the dog team. That's right. Ernie would have to get someone to take him out to the cabin. In that case, it seems logical he'd come back with the same person, leaving Lem's team at the cabin. Yeah, I see what you mean. My idea is that someone overheard the argument and followed Lem. So far, there's no reason for him to suspect us. But it's best to be on the safe side. That snowfall last night covered... That. Let's go. Come along. <coughs> Up front, King. <coughs> All right, one King, one new husky. <coughs> The two Mounties made a fast trip back to town and went directly to the sled standing behind the hotel. Oh, King! How are you, Husky? Land sakes alive, who is it? We don't know yet. Would you mind if King comes inside? We'll follow into the man's room. No, I don't mind. Come on in. <laughs> you mean to say that King can follow somebody by sniffing along the floor like that? Yes, Mrs. Brown. Find him, King. Find <laughs> King moved along a hallway on the ground floor until he came to a closed door. There he stopped and whined. The man we want's in this room. But nobody's in that room now, Sergeant. There were two men right in that room until this morning. And they left just a while ago. Drove the dog team away from the back door. Oh, I see. Constable, we'll go get our dog sled and come back here. King will be able to pick up their trail behind the rooming house. All right. It's a good thing King's able to follow a scent like he does. Sergeant, I've heard a lot about your dog, King, but this is the first time I've seen him in action. Thanks for letting us come in, Mrs. Brown. I hope you catch the men you're after. Frankly, they're mighty rough-looking customers. I think we'll catch them sooner or later. Let's go, Constable. Come along, King. (laughs) Within a short time, the two Mounties and King returned to the back door of the rooming house. Sergeant Preston stopped his dog team. Oh, King! Fire, Husband! Fire! A light snow had begun to fall, and the constable, looking at the ground, spoke with misgivings. Gosh, Sergeant, the dog tracks and the sled marks are covered over. I think it'll be possible for King to follow them? Yes, I do. Hey, King, get the scent, fella. <laughs> the intelligent dog sniffed for a moment, and then raised his head and gave a sharp bark, <laughs> telling his master he had found the scent. <laughs> King has the scent, constable. All right, King, find them. Fine, boy. <laughs> on King! On you, husky! Mac and Manny followed the main trail south toward Whitehorse. When the snow began falling, Mac halted the team. Ho, oh, ho there! Ho, oh, ho oh, there! Oh. Uh, no need to hurry. It's snowing again, Manny. 
Good thing for us, in case something should put the Mollies on our trail. Yeah, I need a rest. But I don't see what would give them any idea we did of Nankin. Ah, uh, neither do I. Like you said before, Sergeant Preston's plenty smart. Look! Where'd you when the two crooks finally arrived at Leon Parlin's, they put their sled and team in a shed behind the cabin. Shortly after, they were enjoying hot coffee as they talked to the sourdough. Uh, you sure have a comfortable place here, Leon. If the storm gets any worse, we'll put up with you for a while. Otherwise, we'll just stay one night. Hey, wait, mon ami. I am most glad for company. But for why you not wait in town until you know the weather would not be bad for travel, huh? Well, frankly, we had good reasons to get away from Selkirk. No use going into details. I want to warn you now, Leon. If anyone comes here after we leave and asks questions, you didn't see us, understand? So? Oh, perhaps you'll run from law, monsieur. Is that it? Now, uh, look, the less questions you ask, the better we'll like it, Frenchy. <coughs> My name is Leon, not French. Oh, don't mind Mac. Leon, he's not trying to insult you. He's just cagey, that's all. Yeah, but it is not good for you to ask me to lie, Mon ami. This fellow Mac, he is not friendly like Mike. <laughs> Maybe for $50 in cash, you'll forget we were here, Leon. Oh, oh that is different, my name. <laughs> for $50, I shall forget most easy. <laughs> good. Yeah, here's a 50. Uh, merci. I told Mac he'd have nothing to worry about when he got to know you. Yeah, Leon. Just forget I called you Frenchy, huh? I reckon if Manny trusts you, I'll be able to do it, too. It's better to be friendly with those you have to trust, monsieur. But you not worry. I not remember you've been here. Good. Well, now that we understand one another, Leon, get out some cards. We'll have a three-handed game to pass the time. Sergeant Preston and the constable moved steadily along the trail. But the great dog king, acting as lead dog, continued to follow the scent of the crooks. The two Mounties traveled for some time in silence, and then Preston spoke. Storm seems to be getting worse, constable. Those two men won't keep on if they have any sense. That's the way I figure too, Sergeant. They don't know we're trailing them, so they'd have no reason to take chances. That's true. There's a cabin a short distance ahead owned by a sourdough, a Frenchman named Leon Parlin. There isn't another cabin beyond that for at least 20 miles. You know Parlin? Not very well. He keeps very much to himself. We might stop there and ask if he saw anyone pass recently. Yes, that's what we'll do. It'll give us a chance to warm up a bit. <laughs> that suit me fine. Parlin must be a newcomer to this part of the territory. He is. He came up from Whitehorse just before the winter season set in. Bought the old Delroy claim when Delroy and his wife went back to the States. Oh, yes, I remember their place. They had a two-room cabin. That's right. I understand Parlin came to Whitehorse when the gold rush started. He used to have a claim on Elk Run near Whitehorse. I seem to remember him. About 50, talks with an accent. Yes. As I recall, he was very close-mouthed. Didn't seem to have much use for police officers. I got the impression he might have had trouble with the law. Well, as I said before, he keeps very much to himself. No one seems to know much about him. Anyway, we'll stop and question him about the men we're following. Ought to be there soon. On, King! On, you husky! For a while, Manny and Mac played cards with Leon in the cabin. Your bet, Mac. Nah, the cards I've been getting out of quit. Wait, Bunnyby. Listen. I hear dogs. I look from window. You see anybody, Leon? We. Oui. There's a dog team heading this way from town. Hey, that doesn't look good. Holy mackerel. Looks like two men with that dog team. Maybe they're Mounties. Let's grab our parkas and go in the back room. We better hurry. Come on, Mac. Remember, Leon, you haven't seen anyone, you understand? Do not worry. I shall turn them away. We'll be in that back room with guns just in case. Let's go, Manny. A few moments later, Sergeant Preston and the constable stopped in front of Leon's cabin. Looking! Hey, Husky! Look, Sergeant. He's gone right to the cabin door. Yes, that means the two men stopped here. They may still be here. Come on. Bonjour. Oh. Oh, I see you are the police. What do you want? We'll come in out of the cold. But of course. Come in. 
Did you see two men pass your cabin this morning, Paulin? No, Sergeant. No one has passed cabin today. Of that I am most sure. Hold on, Paulin. We know the two men Wait came Wait a minute, part. Constable. Paulin, we're police officers. We expect you to tell the truth. May we, Sergeant. But what I have told you is truth. If anyone had passed cabin this morning, I would surely have seen them, no? That's right, you would have. <laughs> King, here, boy. <laughs> Dog, he, he's act strange. He's anxious to leave. Farlin, the men we're trailing are wanted for murder, so if you're not telling the truth... Murder? Murder? That, that is terrible, Sergeant. I not want to be mixed up in such thing. I shall tell you, Sergeant. I did see them. They went past some time ago, heading south. Why did you lie about it? <laughs> I have just remembered it, Constable. For the time I had I'd forgot. All right, Constable, let's go. Come along, King. Come on, boy. Please forgive me for not remembering sooner, Sergeant. Forget it. Come on, Constable. King. Strange he lied at first, Sergeant. He's still lying. King was sniffing at the door of the back room. What's more, I noticed three coffee cups in the sink and three poker hands dealt out on the table. And I noticed a faint line of light under the door. Then you believe the two men are in the back room? Definitely. I'm going back in and take King with me. I'll make some excuse. You go around behind the cabin to cover the back window. Wait till I get inside before you go. Paulin's watching from the front window. Right. Come along, sir. I thought you were gone, Sergeant. We may need some extra coffee to take along with us. May we? Uh, come in, moment. All right. I shall get coffee for you, Sergeant. No need of that, Paulin. The gun, why? Keep your voice down and do as I say. I'll search you. Keep your hands up. Ah, gun. I'll take it. Sergeant, this is big mistake. Walk over there and open the door to the back room. Go on. We, we. The room is empty, Sergeant. See for yourself. Press, Preston stood a moment with his gun at Leon's back. King indicated by a low growl that the men he had trailed were inside, and Preston knew that they must be standing on either side of the doorway out of sight. Suddenly, Leon sprang into the back room. Use your guns on Monty, quick! We'll get him! Oh, As a oh. shot came through the window, hitting Mac in the shoulder, yeah, Manny, Manny yeah. in the center of the lighted room fired just as Sergeant Preston shot at him. Oh. The bullet from Manny's gun split the door jam alongside the Mountie. At the same time, Leon jumped aside and, reaching down, grabbed Mac's gun from the floor, intending to shoot Preston. But the Frenchman didn't see the great dog, King, who, like a swift shadow, sprang past his master and lunged at Leon's gun arm. Help! him away! I'll take that gun. All right, down, King, down. Watch some boy. You all right, Sergeant? Yes. Though I must admit a bullet came close. Search them, Constable. All right. Let's take it easy, will you? All right, you... There's a small canvas bag in this man's pocket. Must be the cash they stole from Lem. Yes, this is the bag Ernie Cushing described. I had nothing to do with it, Sergeant. They paid me to keep quiet. I knew Manny. He gave me $50. Manny's the one that did it. The killing, I mean, you can't blame me. You're boy. both under arrest in the name of the Crown for murder. And Parlin, you're going to jail for attempted murder. Well, Sergeant, this clears young Cushing. Yes, Constable. I'll take the money back to him and put these killers in jail. This case is closed. In our next adventure, the outlaw waited beside his unconscious prisoner at the side of the trail until his partner returned. Well, how about it? It's Preston. I'm sure of it. I recognized his lead dog. Where is he? Just crossing the valley. What do we do with this guy? How we get rid of him? We don't get rid of him. We get rid of Preston. This hombre's gonna lead us on to his goal. Come on, we'll fill Preston full of lead as he comes up the hill. King races in the lead of his master's team as they charge up the hill toward the outlaw's ambush. Two killers are determined that Sergeant Preston must die. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. The Challenge of the Yukon is brought to you every Saturday and Sunday.
This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next adventure. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>